get ready for some rapid fire tips and tricks for how to use Adobe Illustrator, the industry leading vector graphics software by Adobe that lets you create everything from logos, icons, book illustrations and more. In this video, we'll take you through 26 essential Adobe Illustrator tutorials, tools, hacks and settings going from A to Z. For all the featured images and resources, check out Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as graphics, video templates and fonts. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial license and you can cancel at any time. So subscribe now with the link down in the description below. A is for actions. Use actions to automate tasks such as resizing, applying effects to an image and saving files in a desired format. Go to Windows, Actions to access the Actions panel which will enable you to save and load action files. Download an action like this one from Envato Elements. Load it up by clicking on the Load Actions button and then simply hit the Play button to apply it to your image or text. B is for Illustrator Brushes. Brushes in Illustrator let you stylize and change the appearance of paths that you create. You can apply a brush to an existing path or use the Paintbrush tool to draw a path and apply the brush strokes at the same time. C is for the Crystallize tool. This fun tool allows you to add random spiked details to the outline of your shapes and objects. To access it, simply click and hold the Width tool and select the Crystallize tool at the bottom. D is for Divide Objects Below. Let's first create the two objects that we want to use. Then select the object that you want to use as a cutter, such as this star here, and position it so that it's overlapping above the object you want to cut. Once everything is in position, go to Object, Path, Divide Objects below to cut and divide the objects successfully. E is for the eyedropper tool. Use the eyedropper tool to copy or move appearance attributes such as color fill and strokes. First, select the object whose attributes you want to change. Then select the eyedropper tool from the toolbar on the left or by pressing I on the keyboard. Now move the eyedropper tool to the object whose attributes you want to sample. Click on the eyedropper tool and all the appearance attributes will be copied over. F is for feather. To do this, first select an object that you wish to feather. Then click on Effect, Stylize, and then choose Feather. Check the Preview option to see the changes as you adjust the radius value. G is for the Gradient tool. You can access the Gradient tool on the toolbar here or by pressing G on the keyboard. And then once you have that selected, simply navigate to the object that you want to apply a gradient on and then click on it. This will apply a standard gradient on the object and you'll also see the gradient annotator appear on top of the object. The gradient annotator is a slider that allows you to edit the starting point, the end point and the color stops. Here we can change the color of the color stops by clicking on them and we can change the location of the color stops by clicking and dragging. H is for the hand tool. Want to navigate around the artboard more easily without having to use the bottom and right scroll bars all the time? Then the hand tool is going to be your best friend. This often forgotten tool will help speed up your workflow drastically. You can access it by pressing the letter H on your keyboard where your cursor will change into the hand tool. Now you can just click and drag over your artboard to move around. I is for image trace. Ever wanted to edit a raster image such as a JPEG or a PNG in Illustrator? Well you can do exactly that with image trace. 
This feature lets you convert an image into a vector artwork. Simply select your imported image in Illustrator and then choose Object, Image, Trace and then Make. You can adjust the result further by using the Image Trace panel by going to Windows, Image Trace. Here you can then choose from different presets that are made specifically for different types of images such as photos, line art and sketches. J is for the Join tool. With this tool, you can connect two ends of a path to create a closed path. To select the Join tool, go to the Tools panel and click and hold on the Pencil tool to reveal and select the Join tool. Then, with the Join tool selected, locate the area of the artwork where you want to clean it up. Then click and drag in a scrubbing motion over the two points. When you release the mouse, the two paths will be joined together into a single complete path with any excess trimmed off. To close a gap, we can use the join tool in a similar way. Let's zoom into the gap here and then simply click between the two ends to connect the line, like so. K is for the knife tool. To access the knife tool, click and hold the eraser tool and then select the knife tool from the options that appear. Then all you need to do is simply click and drag over an object to cut it, like so. L is for Live Paint. This tool can be accessed from the panel on the left here or by hitting K on your keyboard. Now, unlike a normal fill, the Live Paint tool can differentiate between all the different overlapping shapes here. You can also click and hold and drag across multiple shapes to color them in at the same time. M is for the Magic Wand tool. This tool lets you select objects of the same color, stroke weight, stroke color, opacity, or blending mode. Simply select it from the toolbar on the left or press Y on the keyboard. You can use the Magic Wand tool to select all the objects with similar attributes to the one you are selecting, like this object here. You can also customize the Magic Wand tool to select objects based on specific attributes. To do this, double click on the Magic tool in the panel here and use the checkboxes to specify what you're looking for. N is for the Navigator panel. Clicking and dragging the Navigator panel thumbnail display can quickly change the view of your artwork. The red box corresponds to the currently viewable area that you can work in and you can also use the zoom in and zoom out buttons on the bottom left of the panel here. O is for Outer Glow. This is an effect that adds a blurry glow of any colour outside the edges of the object. To do this, select the object and then go to Effect, Stylize and Outer Glow. Here you can choose the colour of the glow and also what opacity and how much blur the glow will have. P is for the Pen Tool. Another one of Illustrator's most essential tools, the Pen Tool allows you to draw paths by clicking to make an anchor point and then clicking again to join them up. Simply clicking between an anchor point creates a straight line, whereas if you click and drag, you'll create a curve. Some quick tips for this tool is that you can hold the shift key on the keyboard to constrain the angle to 45 degrees as you're creating a straight path. The same angle constraints are applied when drawing out a curved line as well. Q is for the hotkey Q, which gives us the lasso tool. This allows us to select the anchor points of an object by clicking and dragging it around the anchor points that you want to select. R is for the Rectangle tool, which you can use to draw rectangles of any size. Simply select the tool from the toolbar or hit M on the keyboard, and then click and drag to create the desired rectangular shape. S is for Illustrator SVG files. You can save your artwork from Illustrator into an SVG file by going to File, Save As, 
and then choosing SVG as the file type. T is for type on path. This allows you to wrap your text around a circle. Hold down the type tool located on the toolbar on the left and then select the type on path tool. Now go over and click on the edges of the circle and just like that you can start typing along the path. U is for Unite. Unite allows you to combine selected objects and shapes together taking on all the attributes of the overlapping object. You can find Unite in the Pathfinder panel. Then select the objects that you want to unite and simply click on the Unite button to combine them together. V is for the Vertical Type tool. This tool allows you to create vertical type and type containers. This can be especially useful if writing out content within a given space in Chinese or Japanese, or creating a sign in a vertical format. W is for the Warp tool. You can find this tool on the toolbar on the left by clicking and holding the Width tool and then choosing the Warp tool. This allows you to manipulate an object in whatever direction you drag the tool across. X is for the hotkeys X and Shift X. These allow you to toggle between the fill and stroke colors and switch back and forth to them. Y is for the hotkey Control Y or Command Y on the Mac. This allows you to view your artwork so that only the outlines or paths are visible. This removes all the color and effects of your artwork and can drastically increase your computer's performance speed. Z is for zigzag. With Illustrator, it's easy to create a jagged zigzag line or a curvy wave. Simply select the line you want to apply the effect to and then go to Effect distort and transform zigzag to bring up the zigzag dialog box. From here you can have a play with the options such as the size and the ridges to get the desired effect that you want. So that's it for this video. If you liked it and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent tutorials Envato Tuts Plus has to offer. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.